Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at what PSK authentication is and how we can configure it on our wireless LAN controllers. This video forms part of the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam Series 350-401. The exam topic covered as part of this video is 5.4c, which is to configure and verify PSK authentication. So first things first, let's take a look at what PSK authentication is, also known as pre-shared key authentication. Pre-shared key authentication is used to secure wireless connections on a wireless LAN by using a key string that authenticates the client connecting. Pre-shared key authentication requires that all wireless nodes connecting to a wireless LAN be configured with the same pre-shared key in order to authenticate wireless clients. In order for pre-shared key authentication to work, it utilizes one of three versions of WPA, also known as Wi-Fi Protected Access. We'll talk about Wi-Fi Protected Access shortly, however before we get onto that, there are three modes of WPA that are available for use and certified by the Wi-Fi Alliance. These are WPA, also referred to as WPA1. This was a replacement for an old security standard known as Wired Equivalent Privacy, or WEP for short. WPA1 was since superseded by WPA2. This standard brought about bringing increased encryption mechanisms and aimed to provide better security of the previous WPA1 standard. Although WPA2 was considered more secure than the original WPA1, there were a number of vulnerabilities discovered within WPA2. As such, WPA3 was announced by the Wi-Fi Alliance to address shortfalls with the WPA2 standard and improve the security of the standard. It's worth noting that all three standards can still be used, however it's strongly advised to use WPA3 where available. So we've already started to take a look at WPA, however let's take a look at it in a little bit more detail. So WPA is a security protocol, as we've mentioned, that was created by the Wi-Fi Alliance to make our wireless networks more secure. There are two modes available within all three WPA versions. These are Personal and Enterprise. The difference between the two modes being that WPA Personal uses a key string or pre-shared key in order for clients to authenticate. This is the mode we're going to be focused on as part of this exam topic. On the other hand, WPA Enterprise is used in conjunction with an external radius server and 802.1x. However, we won't be covering this in this video. The mode will be selected when we configure our wireless network within our wireless LAN controller, depending on if we decide to authenticate using a radius server and using 802.1x, or we decide to use a pre-shared key. Finally, before we move on, WPA utilizes a four-way handshake when authenticating clients using a pre-shared key. An overview of this handshake can be seen on the screen now. The process is a method of exchanging messages between our client, known as the supplicant, connecting to the access point, known as the authenticator. The supplicant and authenticator will work through a four-way handshake and the supplicant will use a pre-shared key in order to build and exchange encryption key content. The process will never send the pre-shared key over the air. However, a major flaw in the process within WPA2 allowed a malicious user to brute force the pre-shared key by capturing enough of the wireless packets from the four-way handshake. Because of this, WPA3 aimed to work around these issues by using a method called simultaneous authentication of equals, known as SAE. This strengthened the key exchange between the client and the access point and also implemented forward secrecy, which means that if a malicious user captured enough encrypted packets from the network and then tried to brute force the pre-shared key offline, it would be impossible to snoop the traffic. So there are a number of benefits to using pre-shared key authentication within our wireless networks. First of all, pre-shared key authentication is extremely simple and easy to set up. As such, it's mainly used for smaller environments. In addition to this, it also provides simplicity for the user as they're used to the process and simply have to enter a text string in order to authenticate. Finally, pre-shared key authentication is great for devices within the network that don't support 802.1x or WPA enterprise authentication. As you can imagine, there are a number of downsides to using pre-shared key authentication. First of all, the same identical pre-shared key must be configured on all devices using the wireless network. An alternative to this is to use Cisco's identity pre-shared key feature within Cisco ISE. What this allows you to do is present a single SSID to your network. However, it allows you to have more than one pre-shared key that can be used in order to segment devices into separate VLANs, depending on the pre-shared key used to authenticate. Another problem with using pre-shared key authentication without Cisco ISC is that the key must be changed often, as if the key gets shared or discovered by unauthorized users, it must be changed across all devices. It's also worth noting that the key is saved in plain text on Windows machines, for example. 
Finally, unlike other authentication methods, there's no easy way to identify users or devices authenticated to the network. This is because all users are authenticating using the same pre-shared key. So now we understand what pre-shared key authentication is and how it works, let's jump over to our wireless LAN controller and configure this. So the configuration itself is extremely easy. First of all, we'll log into our controller and go to advanced at the top. From here, we'll then navigate to WLANs and select to create a new WLAN profile. In here, we'll give our profile and wireless network a name and apply the configuration. We'll then quickly enable our wireless LAN profile and assign it the correct interface. Once this has been completed, we'll head over to the security tab and navigate to the layer two subsection. Within here, we need to select WPA plus WPA2. It's worth noting that WPA3 will appear as WPA2 plus WPA3 in the dropdown if the wireless controller firmware supports it. However, the firmware used in this video only supports up to WPA2. Next up, under WPA and WPA2 parameters, we can see that by default only WPA2 and AES encryption is enabled. These should be left as defaults unless you have a specific requirement to change them, for example device compatibility within the environment. Finally, the last thing we need to do is configure the actual pre-shared key itself. To do this, we'll go down to Authentication Key Management. You can see that by default 802.1x is enabled, however as we're not using WPA Enterprise in this video, we want to use WPA Personal. As such, we'll disable 802.1x and enable the pre-shared key. Once enabled, we'll then get the option to enter the pre-shared key we want to use as an ASCII text string. In this example, I'll use Cisco123 as the pre-shared key, however it's advised to use a stronger key in production environments. Now that's been completed, we'll press apply, and that's all the configuration completed. So now we've gone over the configuration of pre-shared key, let's take a look at how it can verify the configuration. There are two ways that we can do this. First of all is by checking the security policy of the wireless LAN profile. We can do this by going back to WLANs at the top of the wireless LAN controller. And then under the wireless LAN profile we created earlier, we can see under security policies, the WPA mode we've configured and that we're using WPA personal or pre-shared key authentication. And there we have it. That's a complete overview of pre-shared key authentication and how we can configure and verify it within our wireless LAN controllers. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Apart from that, remember to subscribe and like the video for more CCMP enterprise videos. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.